attention. And if you are a parent, I imagine it will catch your attention as well. And that is the influence that the Chinese government may be having on our classrooms. Is that a thing? Uh, apparently. And uh, we invited Michelle Exner to join us this morning. She's a senior advisor at Parents Defending Education. DefendingEd.org is the website. Michelle, welcome in. And thank you so much for having me, Mark. Fortunately, I've got some of the best listeners uh, in radio, and one of them emailed me earlier this week asking about a House committee education hearing that was held on academic freedom under attack. And part of it dealt with the CCP, the Chinese Communists, grip yep. on American classrooms. What is that all about? Yeah, so last March, Parents Defending Education released a report specifically uh, investigating China Link funding going to a high school in Northern Virginia. So that was Thomas Jefferson High School. It's actually one of the best high schools in the country. And so a report uh, released by PD in March showed that there was at least a million dollars in China Link funding that went to this school. Um, since then, we've actually found it's been over $3 million. And as you can imagine, deeply problematic. China is one of the, the biggest adversaries of the United States and cannot be trusted. Well, absolutely. So what are they teaching? I mean, I, I would I would look for uh, the curriculum and things like that. I haven't been able to find that yet. What are they teaching? Absolutely. So so let's use this Fairfax example and then we'll take it broader to where our investigation led us. So in Fairfax, since we received information back on the FOIA request, we have we have found out that it, essentially the school allowed Chinese officials to take a look, um, as one PTA, former PTA president or PTA member said, take a look under the hood. So to see lesson plans, to see floor plans, to look at student research projects. Um, and, and here's the kicker, right? We received FOIA information back from Fairfax County Public Schools, and it actually showed some of the email exchanges. And, it, and you know what the Chinese officials are trying to get at. They're trying to get at the curriculum. And again, I want to remind your listeners, this is one of the best high schools in the country. And, and you know, we already know that China can be trusted. So obviously they're looking at it to potentially uh, get, the, get the curriculum, uh, perhaps even student information. We just don't know, and that's why it was so important to have that hearing last week. Yeah. Michelle, this is Kim. It's not just limited, though, to these public schools, right? I mean, this is happening at all kinds of schools across the country. Yes, we have found in total there have been 143 school districts across the country that have received China linked funding. Um, and it's been nearly $18 million and probably more so now that we're getting more information since the report has been released. Mm -hmm. And again, this impacts 34 states across, across the country and the District of Columbia. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Kim, it's both public schools and also we found so, some instances in private schools as well. Yeah, I was going to ask because uh, a part of the information I received included uh, Webster University uh, here in the greater St. Louis area, uh, mm -hmm. it was mentioned, including a couple of high schools. Now, do you guys have a list of, of schools in the St. Louis area that might have been affected by this? So if you, if, if uh, your listeners go to, uh, the report is called Little Red Classrooms. Um, it's on the Parents Defending Education website. It's one of our, our top recent posts. Um, you'll see detailed information down to every district, district by state um, by amount that they received as well. So that information is all, all out there as well. And I think one of the other very concerning aspects of it is that we've found that some of these Confucius classrooms were found in districts near at least 20 uh, military installations, which obviously that brings up even broader, you know, the, stu the student data is, is important that we protect and safeguard, absolutely. But then now we're getting into the broader national security vulnerabilities, um, potentially for the United States. How right. are they selling this to the districts? Are they saying, oh, you know, we're going to teach these kids about different languages and cultures? Uh, what are they doing to get in the classrooms, aside from saying, here's some money for you? Absolutely, Kim. You're, you're, you're correct because some of these schools are okay. This is this is some resources that can flow into the school, and it's attractive to say you have some Mandarin classes, you have some cultural classes, and and to be clear, we're not saying any of that is bad, right? Um, we're saying that it is 
that the problem is if the Chinese Communist Party is vetting the teachers who are going to American schools to teach this, the problem is you don't know what kind of lesson plans are going on in the classrooms. Are they are, are they hiding the truth about Tiananmen Squares? Are they hiding the truth about their human rights abuses? Are they are they making an entire generation of American students sympathetic to China and not think that they they're an adversary of the United States? So all of these are important questions we need to get at. Well, I, I think it's it's a list, and again, defendinged.org, it's a list people need to know. And I looked through there, uh, your list just then, and it did not have Missouri on there. Okay. Uh, but but, but the, another list I showed, maybe, and maybe it's one that had closed, there was a list of these programs that had been active and are now closed, and one of them said Webster University on, on the map. Yes. And so and so you're correct. So something we've seen. So some of these have been our report goes back to to these Confucius classrooms that have been established more than a decade ago. And so we wanted to comb through all of that, all of that information. And so, yeah, right now there's only a handful that are active and really a lot of credit of that goes to the previous administration uh, under the Trump administration in the summer of 20. Um, Secretary Pompeo at the State Department deemed Confucius Institute's a foreign mission. Okay. And so that created an effort to shut a lot of these down, which, down, which, is, which is great. Um, and so uh, there are still a handful that, that, are, that are open, um, and obviously we need to keep a close eye on that. <laughs> um, and um, like you said, the, the link to the university to, to classrooms, that's something that, that is set up, and I think – Potentially, China could be exploiting that to get into some of the lower level schools. So, so these are just some questions we want to get at. I imagine that China will want to continue expanding this program to as many schools as possible. You obviously have this very helpful list. Is there anything parents listening right now can look for in their child's curriculum to see if maybe this is happening at their district? Absolutely. So, so two of the main things that we could be doing right now is, is transparency. Um, and so, so parents should be demanding at the school that they're able to see the budget line by line from the schools. And if there's foreign funding um, going into the schools, parents should be able to, to see that and make a determination and decision whether they want they want their student to be a part of this, they want their child to be a part of it, or whether they just want to kind of raise a red flag that this doesn't seem right. Yeah. Um, and, and number two, um, you know, we're, we're, we're talking state officials, federal officials over in Congress about what can be done. And another big piece of this is prohibit, uh, you know, prohibit all this all together if, if there's link directly to the Chinese government. Again, we don't want to discourage these language classes. They are obviously huge benefits to our students. We should be challenging American students, um, but but we need to make sure that there's the necessary safeguards to protect students yes. and protect America. Yeah, uh, Michelle Exner, thanks for your time. DefendingEd.org is the website. Thank you very much.